NASA has revealed five of the first images from the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST to its friends, that in a report at SpaceChatter.com. Now, you can like and subscribe, please, so you can get the latest information. These images are breathtaking. I'm going to let NASA explain most of them here, but I have downloaded the actual images, so we'll have them here for you a bit clearer than they were in their online broadcast. Now, the first full-color image snapped by JWST reveals a galaxy cluster called SMACS 0723, as it appeared 4.6 billion years ago. Now, that of course means that the light took that long to get here. That's how far away it is. Here are the NASA folks with more. So the first image is a deep field, and it's also a deep field with a cluster. So why don't we walk through this just a little bit? So if we come up and look at this image, first of all, it's really gorgeous, yeah. and it's teeming with galaxies. And that's something that has been true for every image we've gotten with Webb. We can't take blank sky. Everywhere we look, there's galaxies everywhere. And so, you know, this, gal this, this image, as we're looking at it, what we're seeing is not just all the galaxies, but there's a cluster here. And so the cluster are all these white kind of ethereal galaxies. We're seeing them as they looked back in time, right? The speed of light is only so fast. And so as we're seeing distant galaxies out in space, we're seeing them as they looked billions of years ago. So these cluster galaxies, the white ones, we're seeing as they looked about the time the sun and the earth formed. And then behind the cluster, we have uh, the, 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 the gravity of the cluster is distorting and warping our view of what's behind. And so there are these galaxies that look stretched and pulled, kind of like, like they've been magnified because they've been magnified by the gravity of the cluster, just like Einstein said they would. And, you know, it's really, there's so much detail here. We're seeing these galaxies in a way that we've never been able to see before. There's just a sharpness and a clarity we've never had. And so we can look at, if we zoom in on this image, and I encourage you as you grab this image at home, like zoom in, it, you can, you know, really zoom in and play around. There are galaxies here in which you're seeing individual clusters of stars forming, popping up, just like popcorn. Um, and then, we also see in the background of this, of this image kind of littered like jewels all over the back of the image are these faint red galaxies. Now, that was what we built the telescope to do. The most distant of those are billions of years. We're seeing as they looked more than 13 billion years ago. And so galaxies like that one right there, this little red guy, you're like, OK, yep. <laughs> what is that? Well. Webb got spectra to figure out what those galaxies are made of, and this is that one. We're seeing as it looked 13.1 billion years in the past, less than a billion years after the Big Bang, and we're seeing the elements of oxygen and hydrogen as well as neon. You know, this is the kind, this is how the oxygen in our bodies was made in stars, in galaxies, and we're seeing that process get started. To give you an idea of how far away this is, they say this first image slice of the sky is about as large as if you were to hold a grain of sand out at arm's length. That's pretty tiny. And we'll run all of these images again at the end of the video as well. Next, it's the Southern Ring Planetary Nebula, a dying star expelling gas and dust in orbit with a younger star that's helping to change the shape of this nebula. Here's more from our friends at NASA. We have a near-infrared image on our left, or on maybe your right. <laughs> and here on the right, we have a near-infrared image. Um, and so I'm here with Carl, our, our astronomer uh, specialist. Can you tell us what we're looking at in these images? So this is a planetary nebula. It's caused by a dying star that has expelled a large fraction of its mass over in successive waves. OK, so we actually see those waves in these images. Yes. Um, Wow, wow. And so there's a lot of structure. Can you tell us a little more detail about what we're looking, maybe start with this one on the left? Yeah, so in the, in the near cam image, you see this kind of bubbly, uh, you know, almost foamy appearance throughout the whole nebula with some very structured uh, shells. But the, and this foaminess is showing up in orange mainly. And this is, this is due to the molecular hydrogen that's newly formed in the expansion, uh, just lighting up the gas and dust of this nebula. And then as we move inward, you see this kind of very uh, blue haze in the inner region. And this is actually due to very hot ionized gas that emits well in the blue um, that's heated by the core, the leftover very hot core of this star. 
And what about these like rays that I'm seeing in this image? Right there. So there's also rays in the outer regions that you can kind of see, and these are holes in the inner nebula that are actually allowing the the central star's light to come out and kind of light it up like uh, you know patchy clouds with the sun shining through. Next up is the image of a galaxy cluster called Stefan's Quintet. Five galaxies, four of which interact. Giovanna, what are we looking at? Yes, like you said, a quintet. So we are looking at five galaxies. Galaxies are uh, this giant structure that as we've seen, we see everywhere around us in the universe. They contain from million to hundred billions of stars. And in fact, we live in one of them, the Milky Way. And here we see uh, five of them. This is a, a closer um, a galaxy uh, in the foreground. And these four are uh, at a distance of about uh, uh, 300 uh, million light years from us. And they're locked in a close interaction, a sort of cosmic dance driven by the uh, gravitational force. Um, you can see here yeah, these two uh, in a process of merging uh, within each other. This is a very important image uh, and an area to study because it really shows uh, the type of interaction that drives the evolution of galaxies. That, that, uh, that's the mechanism of galaxies' growth. I love this image of the cosmic dance <laughs> moving through each other. Uh, Mark, there's a lot going on though in this image, isn't there? There is. So this is a near-infrared image and a mid-infrared in, infrared image combined. And when we zoom in on on the uh, left-hand side here, we see this foreground galaxy. We see lots of individual stars in there actually resolved as point sources, which is remarkable. And then as we pan across, we actually see the, the galaxies in the, the merging galaxies. We now see gas and dust, which is being heated up in the collision between those galaxies. And that's a place where new stars are being born today. So we're actually seeing the process of creation of new stars in this region. And then when we look in the background here, we see not only the galaxies at 300 million light years, but also stars in our own galaxy, these um, snowflake uh, structures that you see here, those are nearby stars, but in the corner and around the edges, we see galaxies which are much, much more distant, much further away. So similar in some sense to the ones that we saw earlier on in that deep field. And so this image actually takes us from the nearby galaxy, our own Milky Way, through these galaxies which are evolving today all the way to the distant universe. And it, in a way, it captures cosmic evolution of galaxies over those 13.8 billion years. So we have another image, don't we, that we can exactly. look at? Exactly. So, so if we strip away the near-infrared view there of the stars predominantly now in the mid-infrared with Miri alone, we see mostly gas and dust. So we see the same galaxies again, the two merging. And then we also see something very interesting up at the top here because this top galaxy has something new and bright in the middle of it. And Giovanna, tell us what that is. Yeah, that's uh, an active black hole. We cannot see the black hole itself, but we see the material swirling around, being swallowed by this sort of cosmic monsters, and it gets, uh, this gas gets heated to extremely high temperature as it falls onto the black hole, and it becomes very bright. In fact, this is how shiny the galaxy. Here we see uh, luminosity that are 40 billion times the luminosity of our suns. It's really, really bright. Here's a spectacular image of the Carina Nebula, also referred to as the, quote, cosmic cliffs. Look at that. So, Amber, can you, can you tell us a bit about what we're seeing here? Of course. This stunning vista of the cosmic cliffs of the Carina Nebula reveals new details about this vast stellar nursery. Today, for the first time, we're seeing brand new stars that were previously completely hidden from our view. Is there something you want to point out here? Absolutely. So honestly, it took me a while to even figure out what to call out in this image. There's just so much going on here. It's so beautiful. One thing that really, really stands out to me is you sort of get this sense of depth and texture from this new data. Um, there's just, there's a lot going on. To call out a few specifics, first of all, in general, the Carina Nebula is a nearby star forming region within our own Milky Way galaxy, about 7,600 light years away. Um, and in this view, we see some great examples, first of all, of hundreds of new stars that we've never seen before. We see examples of bubbles and cavities and jets that are being blown out by these newborn stars. We even see some galaxies sort of lurking in the background up here. We see examples of structures that, honestly, we don't even know what they are. Like, what's going on here? There's just, there's, the data is just so rich. 
And there's something really special about the infrared. Infrared can actually see deeper into these star forming regions. Absolutely, that's one of the great things about infrared is it really does reveal uh, what's going on here in a, in a really cosmic sense. And in general, what's happening in sort of this overall landscape is we have these gigantic, hot, young stars up here to the top of this rim. And the radiation and stellar winds from those stars is sort of pushing down and running into all of this. This is gas and dust. And of course, we know that gas and dust is great raw material for newborn stars and baby planets. But there's a flip side to this story and also a little bit of a mystery because these same processes can serve to sort of erode away this material and stop star formation. So we have this sort of delicate balance going on of new stars being formed, but at the same time, the star formation is being halted. This last image shows much of the detail and the data that JWSP can find out about exoplanets. That is planets that orbit other stars outside of our solar system. What we're doing is we're actually going to take the light and break it up into a rainbow and look very, very carefully at how much color is coming in each, in each part of the, the spectrum. So I believe we have that image, if we can put that up. Okay, yes, I, I believe we're revealing the spectrum right here. <laughs> so we now have our spectrum, and this is exactly what you're seeing. As you just described with spectroscopy, what we did was we observed a transit of an exoplanet. We observed the planet as it passed in front of the star. Now, mind you, this is not a direct image. This is an indirect direct image. So we've seen the effect of what happens when the planet and its atmosphere passes in front of the star. The starlight filters through the atmosphere. And then you can break that down into wavelengths of light. And you get a bunch of what looks like bumps and wiggles to some people, but it's actually full of information content. So you're actually seeing bumps and wiggles that indicate the presence of water vapor in the atmosphere of this exoplanet. NASA says there's much more to see in the upcoming weeks, months, and years including closer looks at planets here in our good old solar system to galaxies and who knows what other mysteries in the farthest reaches of our universe that have never, ever been seen before. You can get a lot more information by clicking on the link in the description below and heading over to spacechatter.com.